Hello, Mr. Collier here. This is the third part in the lab about energy and our roller coaster. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the data from parts one and two and analyze it. So just a reminder that we took some measurements of the height of the roller coaster at different positions, and we're going to need to be doing some conversions to these in this lab. So here's our data table. What we did was we drop the marble and set the photo gate at different positions on the track. Some were higher, some were lower. And you measured the height off the table and what you found was that the highest height was this very first one and the lowest height was the very last one and everything else was in between. We also found that when you send the marble through the photo gates, the slowest time corresponded to the highest height and the fastest time corresponded to the lowest height. And that ties right into what we've been talking about with potential and kinetic energy and their relations. So our actual data, which is what I'm going to be using to show you the calculations, was that the height in the first position was 34.6 centimeters, and the time across the photo gate was 0 0.0500 seconds. Uh, these are going to be the numbers I use to show you some sample calculations. You can get the rest of the data from the part two in the video series. Couple reminders as we do these calculations. The diameter of the marble is 1.9 centimeters. So we're gonna do all of our calculations though in meters per second. So that's why we're gonna use 0.019 meters as the distance traveled. Also, we mass the marble, it's 28 grams, but we want kilograms, so we're gonna use 0.0280 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. That's something we learned a while ago. And when we measure the height of the marble, uh, sorry, the height of the track, we're going to convert that measurement to meters. So for our first calculation, we need to calculate the speed of the marble at different points on the track. Uh, speed is distance divided by time, and in this case, the distance is 0.019 meters, and the time is the time from table one. So what I would type into the calculator is 0.019 divided by, and my time from part one was 0.019. 0, 0.500 0, 0 seconds, and that works out to be 0 0.380 meters per second. The next thing we're going to calculate is the kinetic energy of the marble. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, so we're going to do 1 half times 0 0.028, and then we're going to multiply it by the speed, which is this number here, and that is 0 0.380, which we just wrote down. Don't forget to square it. And that will give us kinetic energy of 0 0.00202 joules. So it's a very small amount of kinetic energy, which makes sense. It's moving very, very slowly at the beginning. Next, we're going to calculate the potential energy of the marble. Now, this should be a higher number because the marble was pretty high off the ground at this very beginning point. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. The mass, again, is 0 0.0280 kilograms. We're going to multiply that by gravity, 9.8. And we're going to multiply that by the height off the table. So just a reminder, the height was 34.6 centimeters. But we need to convert that to meters, slide the decimal two places to the left, and you get 0.346 meters. That's going to work out to 0 0.0949 joules. All right, so there's the three numbers we calculated. The last thing we need to do is calculate the total energy, which is simply adding up the kinetic and the potential. So you're going to take 0 0.00202, add it to 0 0.0949, and that comes out to 0. 0.0969. And then you're just going to repeat this process for all of your data points. Speed equals distance divided by time. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Potential energy is mgh. Don't forget to convert the h from your first data table. And then add up the potential and the kinetic to get the total energy. The next thing you're going to do is to make some graphs of this data. The first graph is going to compare the position on the roller coaster, so basically how far down the little ramp is it. Uh, that's going to be on the x-axis, and the height off the table is on the y-axis. On the x-axis, I recommend counting by fives. Each block is worth five. For convenience, every other block is labeled ten. 
and that gets you up past 130. If you'll recall, the ramp goes to uh, 125 as your last data point. The y-axis then, the height off the table, uh, also in centimeters, and your heights were not much over 30 centimeters. So what I did was I counted by twos. So this would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and so forth. Then you're going to plug in your data points and you should get a graph. Your second graph is going to compare the speed of the marble versus the position on the ramp. So the x-axis is the same, the position on the ramp from 0 to 130. Your data points are on the fives. And then the y-axis is going to be the speed. Now the speed of the marble in meters per second uh, ranged from 0 to a little over one and a half uh, meters per second. So I counted by point ones. So 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1.0, and so forth. You'll plot your data points and have a second graph, and then you're going to do some analysis. Your conclusion questions are going to ask you about how height relates to speed, which relates to potential and kinetic energy, uh, and hopefully uh, you'll really understand the concepts of how potential energy is related to height, and kinetic energy is related to speed. And these two energies can transform back and forth as the marble gets higher and slower or lower and faster. Good luck.